In this video, we're going to continue talking about confidence intervals, and specifically, large sample confidence interval for population proportion. Now, suppose we wanted to estimate the proportion of blue candies in a very large bowl. We could take a sample of candies and compute the proportion of blue candies in our sample. But how much confidence do you have in the point estimate? Would you have more confidence if your answer were an interval? Now a confidence interval, or a CI, for a population characteristic is an interval of plausible values for the characteristic. The primary goal of a confidence interval is to estimate an unknown population characteristic. It is constructed so that with a chosen degree of confidence, the actual value of the characteristic will be between the lower and upper endpoints of the interval. So let's do a little activity. Rate your confidence from 0 to 100 percent. How confident in a percent are you that you can guess my age within 10 years? So what does it mean to be within 10 years? Well that means either 10 years below or 10 years above. So that means that there's a 20 year interval there. So what do you think? How confident are you that you can do it within five years? And what about within one year? What happened to your level of confidence as the interval became smaller? Did your level of confidence go down as well? Now, the confidence level associated with a confidence interval estimate is the success rate of the method used to construct the interval. So if this method was used to generate an, in, an interval estimate over and over again from different samples, in the long run, 95% of the resulting intervals would include that actual value of the characteristic being estimated. Our confidence is in the method, not in any one particular interval. The most common confidence intervals are 90%, 95%, and 99% confidence. Now recall the general properties for sampling distributions of p-hat. We have our mean of the sampling distributions of p-hat equal to p. We have our standard deviation of the sampling distributions of p-hat equal to the square root of p times the quantity 1 minus p, all divided by n, as long as the sample size is less than 10% of the population. And third, as long as n is large, meaning that n times p is greater than or equal to 10, and n times 1 minus p is greater than or equal to 10, the sampling distribution of p hat is approximately normal. These are the conditions that must be true in order to calculate a large sample confidence interval for p. So let's develop the equation for the large sample confidence interval. To begin, we will use a 95% confidence interval. So we're going to use the table of standard normal curve areas to determine the value of z star such that a central area of 0.95 falls between negative z star and positive z star. So this is going to represent our central angle. And there's a lower and an upper tail, each having a value of 0 0.025. Our negative z star is negative 1.96, and our positive z star is 1.96. So 95% of these values are within 1.96 of the mean. We can generalize this to normal distribu distributions other than the standard normal distribution. So about 95% of the values are within 1.96 standard deviations of the mean. For large random samples, the sampling distribution of p hat is approximately normal. So about 95% of the possible p hat will fall within 
1.96 times the square root of p times 1 minus p divided by n within p. So that's 1.96, which is our critical z-score, times the standard deviation of our sample distribution of p hat. Now, if p hat is within 1.96 times the standard deviation of our sampling distribution of p hat of p, this means the interval p hat minus 1.96 times the standard deviation of our sample distribution of p hat to p hat plus 1.96 times the standard deviation of our sample distribution of p hat will capture p. And this will happen for 95% of all possible samples. So here's an approximate sampling distribution of p hat. Here is the mean of the sampling distribution. This line is going to represent 1.96 standard devi deviations below the mean. And this line is going to represent 1.96 standard deviations above the mean. So suppose we get this p hat. So we're going to create an interval around p hat. Notice that the length of each half of the interval equals 1.96 times the standard deviation of our sample distribution of p hat. So this p hat fell within 1.96 standard deviations of the mean, and its confidence interval captures p. Notice how our green line, which represents our p hat interval, intersects our blue line, which is our mean. And so it has captured p. So let's find another p hat and an interval. Well, this p hat fell within 1.96 standard deviations of the mean, and its confidence interval captures p. Let's do another. So let's say we drop a p here. Well, this p hat doesn't fall within 1.96 standard deviations of the mean. And its confidence interval does not capture p. So when n is large, a 95% confidence interval for p is that p has plus or minus 1.96 times the standard deviation of our sampling distribution of p hat. Using this method of calculation, the confidence interval will not capture p 5% of the time. The diagram to the right is 100 confidence intervals for p computed from 100 different random samples. Note that the ones with asterisks don't capture p. So if we were to compute 100 more confidence intervals for p from 100 different random samples, would we get the same results? We might not get the same results, but we might get something similar. Now, let's look at a more general formula for our large sample confidence interval for p. Now, the general formula for a confidence interval for a population proportion p, when our p hat is the sample proportion from a random sample, the sample size n is large, meaning our n times p hat is greater than 10, and our n times 1 minus p hat is greater than or equal to 10. And if the sample is selected without replacement, the sample size is small relative to the population size, so at most 10% of the population. The general formula for a confidence interval for a population proportion p 
is p hat, which is our point estimate, plus or minus our z critical value times the estimate of the standard deviation of p hat or the standard error. The standard error of a statistic is the estimated standard deviation of the statistic. This is called the bound on the error estimation. A 95% confidence interval is based on the fact that the, for approximately 95% of all random samples, P is within the bound on error estimate of P hat. This is also called the margin of error. Let's take a look at an example. So the article, How Well Are U.S. Colleges Run?, describes a survey of 1,031 adult Americans. And the survey was carried out by the National Center for Public Policy, and the sample was selected in a way that makes it reasonable to regard the sample as representative of adult Americans. Of those surveyed, 567 indicated that they believe a college education is essential for success. So the point estimate is going to be 0.55. What is the 95% confidence interval for the population proportion of adult Americans who believe that a college education is essential for success? Now, before computing the confidence interval, we need to verify the conditions. So first, our n times our p hat comes out to 567. And our n times 1 minus p hat comes out to 364. Now since both of these are greater than 10, the sample size is large enough to proceed. Second, the sample size of 1031 is much smaller than 10% of the population size, which is adult Americans. And third, the sample was selected in a way designed to produce a representative sample. So we can regard the sample as a random sample from the population. All of our conditions are verified. So it's safe to proceed with the calculation of the confidence interval. So we have our p hat plus or minus our z critical value and since we're taking a 95% confidence interval that's 1.96 so using addition and subtraction we find our lower and our upper bounds our lower bound is 0.521 and our upper bound is 0.579 so what does this interval mean in the context of the problem. And it's always important to make sure that you can relate back to the context of the problem. So our conclusions here is that we are 95% confident that the population proportion of adult Americans who believe that a college education is essential for success is between 52.1% and 57.9%. Now, Let's compute a 90% confidence interval for this proportion. So our critical Z score for 90% is point, excuse me, 1.645, which yields a lower bound of our interval of 0.524 and an upper bound of 0.575. Computing a 99% confidence interval for this proportion, where our critical Z score for 99% is 2.58, yields us a lower bound of 0.510 and an upper bound of 0.590. Now, what do you notice about the relationship between the confidence level of an interval and the width of the interval? Recall the rate your confidence activity that we did at the beginning of this video.
as the interval got smaller, so did your confidence. But as the interval was bigger, your confidence level was also larger.